You're listening to LibraryCast, your library podcast with me, Jeremy Thompson-Smith, Somerset Library's Outreach Officer for the Mendips, bringing to you Libraries from Home. On this week's LibraryCast, we welcome Colin Emmett from the Mendips Storytelling Circle. Colin, welcome to LibraryCast. How are you? Very well, thank you. It must be very difficult where we're all locked in and you either can't tell your stories or can't reach out to write new stories. How is it being locked away where the storytelling skills from the Mendip Storytelling Circle cannot be told? They can be told, actually. I'm sending out to our uh, email uh, list, I'm sending out a, a new story every week. Um, mostly recorded by Janet North, and we hope we'll be, be able to, to carry that through until the end of the exclusion. So tell us a little bit about the Mendip Storytelling Circle, what you do, and when did you first get together? When did we first get together? That was Mendip Fest, which was a, a small festival put, in, put on at the Odd Down Inn at Embra uh, seven years ago to celebrate all things Mendip in the folk world, music, stories, songs, put on by Dave Byrne. He asked, he knew that I was telling stories in folk clubs, so he asked me to do a session, which we did. Um, and then I gathered two or three other people who I knew could tell a story um, and said, let's launch um, Mendip Storytelling Circle. And we did the, we did the, the festival in May and uh, we launched in October. We have had a fixed venue and we've been meeting uh, on a Thursday, but we're changing that when we reopen. We're changing the venue, moving it to Temple Cloud and moving it to, a, to the first Tuesday in the month. It's open to everybody. Um, we, we do not exclude. Um, we make sure we've got disability access and facilities. We welcome everybody, whether they're a storyteller or a listener. We need listeners, otherwise we want nobody to tell a story to. I try to encourage newcomers to, to tell a story. Sometimes they'll tell the first night they're there. Most people come two or three times and then slowly dip their toes in the water. And some turn out to be very, very good tellers. Art of storytelling is an ancient art. Can you give us a brief sort of synopsis of when storytelling first began and what makes it an art? When it first began, that, that's obviously lost in history, but before anybody could write anything down, stories were told. Hunters would tell, would tell stories around a campfire of their exploits, which would teach the children what was going to happen for them when they grow up, where the best places to hunt and the best animals to, to target and so forth. Stories of, of, of abound everywhere. So in many ways, uh, at the library service, we are delighted to introduce and promote audio books. But in many ways, a story is just that. It's a spoken audio book told live by a person. It's so much better when it's told live by a person. Though I'm not denigrating audio tapes at all, um, they, the interaction between the teller and the audience is very important. And that's what we're missing out during this lockdown. Mm. So, Colin, what do you think makes a good story that needs to be told? There are so many different types of stories uh, and themes for stories. And different tellers will, 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 will prefer to tell different types of stories. What makes a good story? One that's, that's got a little bit of life in it, um, has got a beginning um, a middle and an end, and the, the middle usually needs to three or four challenges in it to make it interesting. When I tell a story, they're all out of my head, and I never tell them the same twice. So if you hear me tell a story today, and then you hear me tell it um, at another meeting later, it'll come out slightly different. What makes, in your view, an original story? Oh, there's very few original stories. It, it, people say there's only seven stories and ev everything is based on those seven stories. 
there seems to be more interest on spoken word through poetry, uh, stories being told on the radio. Do you think there is a growing interest for stories for grown up? So it's no longer just for the kids? It never was just for the kids. Storytelling is goes across the generations and it's appreciated just as much by somebody of 90 as it is of a nine-year-old. It is rising in popularity, it's becoming better known. Uh, there are more story clubs um, and more chances to hear stories. Storytelling, telling a story, remembering a story, listening to a story is good for us. Why do you think that is? Oh, it's certainly a good stimulus to the brain. They say it's good for dementia. Um, if, you, uh, if you learn stories and tell st stories, especially at my age, um, it, it keeps the brain alive. It keeps, keeps things interesting. And it certainly does work. Hmm. So how can we find out more about the Mendip Storytelling Circle? Oh, that's simple. Drop an email to Mendip Story Circle at gmail.com. That's Mendip Story Circle at gmail.com. That will come to me and I will answer whatever the query is or direct you somewhere else or whatever. Do you have any sort of highlights and funny moments that you could share with us? Oh, it is, there's one. Um, we decided to do a story picnic in a forest. And we've, I've investigated it, found a clearing which had some log seats. It was used by the Wildlife Trust as an education um, sort of classroom, if you like, outside classroom. And they said we could use it in the summer holidays when the children were not around. So we went there and I thought a dozen people would turn up. This would be fantastic. We trudged through the woods, we got there, and within 10 minutes of the starting time, there were 40 people sat around in a circle in the blazing sun with no shelter whatsoever, no shade whatsoever. Um, which, yeah, that's, we've got good memories of that. It was a good, a good do. You have a way of taking us back in time, bringing out our imaginations, creating an ambience, an atmosphere. How do you do that? We tell different stories in different styles with different voices. After a few, after a, a, a few attempts, you, 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 you get to know what, what goes together and, and so forth and makes a programme. In the same way that a musician will, will start quietly, build up to a crescendo and then, and then leave everybody with a nice quiet one at the end, that sort of thing. What's your favourite place that you would like to take the Mendip Storytelling Circle to if you haven't yet been there? Where would you like to go that you think will capture the imagination of the storytellers? Wow, that's an open question. Um, how about Top of Glastonbury Tour? The suitable stories for that venue would not be the sort that I tell, but uh, we've got tellers who could cope with that. Uh, we have one, one teller who, who tells in the, in the gardens of um, Bishop's Palace in Wells. We'd love to finish off today with a story. OK, let's, let's, let's try this one. Um, the title is The Brave Little Parrot. It's actually available as a, as a, as a book, a children's book, but it's, it's, good, it's a good story for children or adults with a message. It's, it's a Muslim story from India from many, many years ago. There's a forest which is on fire. The fire intensifies and the animals are all running, they're all trying to escape the fire. They're going for the river. So some of the bigger animals can wade across the river and escape. And they're all standing on the, on the other side of the river watching the forest burn. That's their home, that's their food, it's their habitat. And they see this small gray parrot fly out of the of the forest come out of the smoke and the, the parrot asks them asks all the other animals to come and help him to put out the fire and they all say no 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 it's much safer over here you should come and join us 
but the parrot decides not to. The parrot dips into the river, gets its feathers all wet, sucks up as much water as it can, flies back into the forest and excretes the water onto the fire, which just of course bubbles and hisses and that's it. Water's gone. But the parrot doesn't give up. It comes back to the river and it gets some more water on its feathers and it goes back into the forest. And the, the cheetah says, come across parrot, come across on my back, we can run, we can run fast away from this fire. The parrot says, no, 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 I've got to carry on trying to save our habitat, trying to save our home and all the smaller animals who couldn't get away. Goes back out to the river to get some more water. And the giraffe says, why don't you come up here on top of me? You'd be well away from the flames. And the parrot says, no, 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 I'm not doing that. I've got to try and put the fire out. So he goes down and gets some more water and goes back into the forest. He comes out the next time and the lion says, I am the king of the jungle. Come with me and I will look after you. The parrot says, no, 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 no. I've got to put the fire out. You should be helping me. The parrot goes down, gets some more water and goes back into the forest. While this is happening, an eagle is circling above and the eagle sees what's happening, feels sorry for the parrot and starts to cry. And the eagle's tears are so abundant that they rain down on the forest and put out the fire. The parrot flies out of the smoke to her, to the other animals on the other side of the river and is, is struggling for breath and is exhausted and goes into a sleep. And when the parrot wakes up, realizes that all its singed and burnt feathers have come off and new feathers have formed and they're all brightly colored. So the parrot has been rewarded for all of its efforts by the eagle who turns out to be a god. There we are, that's a story from India, or would have been appropriate at the time of the big fires in Australia. There will be, I am sure, many a story that will be told through these uh, very, very extraordinary times we're in. Colin Emmett from the Mendip Storytelling Circle, thank you so much for joining us on Library Cast. Been a pleasure. You have been listening to Library Cast your Somerset Libraries podcast, bringing to you libraries from home.